Urban Student Global Brief. Let's talk about Canada this century. Post-pandemic, Canada has one of two futures and two only. Either we will be a vassal state or we will be a great power. I'm for the great power scenario. Canada is a great power. That's the strangest thing one has ever said, one has ever heard. Let me try to persuade you. But before I do that, let me say that Canada is very definitively headed down a different path for now, one that displeases me uh, greatly and, and is analytically not that interesting. That is the path of deep vassalization, the consolidation of the vassal condition vis-a-vis -vis Washington. And it's a consolidation that took place formally uh, under the aegis of the USMCA, the new NAFTA agreement with the United States and Mexico. That agreement holds that Canada must explicitly seek the permission, the approval of Washington in order to have deep economic relations with other major countries, read China. Now, whether one thinks that Canada ought to have deep relations with China or another country is beside the point. What is of moment here is that Canada's legal status becomes one of subordination to the strategic interests and caprices and say so of Washington. That's in legal terms and now reputationally it is eminent. It is known in other capitals that Canada not only has a status but Canada uh, uh, subscribed to this status or agreed to this status under pressure, under the pressure of, of uh, economic tariffs tariffs against the auto industry, uh, steel and aluminum punitive tariffs, and the general pressure of, of Washington. The final point there is that in, in, in the final debate stages, uh, the pandemic uh, hit the world and Canada as well, very, very suddenly, and all debate faded into the either the USMCA agreement with that vassali vassalizing clause included was ratified with no debate at all in the Canadian Parliament. No debate at all, no interest in the society, but consolidating the vassal condition, which means that most Canadian foreign policy today is pantomime. It is what I call aw shucks nationalism. Canada talking within a very, very small defined box uh, that from the outside can seem very ridiculous. From the inside uh, seems very real, but is of great consequence for the future of Canada because the future of Canada is uh, a future that is very complex and has many dimensions outside of Washington, to which I want to turn in a second. But let me just say the vassal condition means that Canada lives and dies by the future of the United States and the decision making of the United States. Now, that may be a very positive thing in the Canadian uh, end game. That means Washington may find its feet again and the United States may be a, the great country of the 21st century as it was of the 20th century, in which case the vassal condition will still provide uh, a reasonable life for Canada, even within our uh, limited decision-making set. However, it is not obvious given Washington's behavior today and the tendencies suggested by American behavior, institutions, talent and decision-making and the forces outside is not obvious that that decision-making one will be in the Canadian interest, not actually directly contrary to the Canadian interest and third, uh, successful in making Washington and the United States a winner this century. The Canada is taking its chances in this case without much effort at all. That is, we really outsource the thinking We've just gone by instinct like a remora to the shark, consolidating what was uh, a really sharpened instinct in, after 9-11, the border as the, as the central game, access to the market, and otherwise an American protection umbrella. Now, the mental map of Canada should be much more complex, and this is where the great game and great power possibility arise for Canada. And I'm for that scenario, for reasons that I'm going to try to articulate now. Canada's great game is much more complex this century. It is not just the border of the uh, free trade agreement in the 1980s or the 2001 terrorist acts in, in, in the United States or, or indeed the, the post-Cold War era generally. We have four borders this century, the American one, the Chinese one, the Russian one, 
the European one. I've gone through these ad nauseum in past ones, but that is the mental map, ACRE acre. Uh, it's still not a mental map that is deeply ingrained in the psyche of most Canadian decision makers, even in the intelligentsia, much less the, the general population. No, the, the mental map is still too simplistic and not aware of our basic circumstances. That's why when China exerts a pressure, we're lost. If Russia should exert a pressure or, or, or should there be an oil spill on the Russian side, which just happened on through the Arctic, we are also lost. We still think that Russia is to the east of Europe, which is an intellectual nonsense for Canadian strategy. So within the context of this great four-point game, ACRE, there, the great forces of these four powers, which are all nuclear powers uh, and major powers, the forces against the Canadian geography could crush us very quickly, uh, and the China-United uh, States bras de fer at our borders is just a very small manifestation of, of the pressures that could crush us this century if, if all of them conspired at once. At the same time, they could tear us apart if their gravity started to pull and we don't have a nuclear construction, uh, a constitution that is, that is sufficiently mighty to withstand these forces. Indeed, I count about 13 vectors of pressure or pull on Canada. You have the China-America one. You have the China-Russia one. You have Russia-Europe, Europe-America, Europe-China, uh, and, and combinations between them. What about China, Russia, and Europe? or America, Europe, and China. In, in their combinations, there are 13 that we'll need to manage. We only have experts in Canada in one of those 13 vectors, and that's the America vector. It's the only one we know. It's our default instinct. Again, the vassalization. However, if we're able to be à la hauteur, as it were, if we're able to manage these 13 combinations, expand our mental map, expand our expertise, and also uh, more richly populate and, and uh, the, the territory, given the opening of the Arctic space, I imagine a country, uh, a Canadian federation by the end of the century, of closer to 100 million, much more reasonable given our size, our circumstances strategically, and our needs economically, socially, institutionally across the territory. If we're able to play at that level, we will ourselves, having survived that great game, become a major power. At 100 million, a Canadian Canada that survives these great powers at its borders in the 13 combinations that begins to think at that level a very major transformation in the Canadian psyche as a term setter is all of a sudden a country that is bigger than Russia, bigger than all of the European powers, uh, bigger than most countries in the world, will be one of the second major country in the West at 100 million, just shy of the United, well, considerably smaller than the United States still, but bigger than any European country, bigger than Russia, bigger than Japan. And now the center of the world, as it were, still having very meaningful geography, an Arctic that is opening up and will be aware of our circumstances, thinking at the right level as a term-setting country. That'll be good for us. It'll be a much more dignified position, and it will be more meaningful in the human condition globally.